Hey YouTube, it's your boy Gabriel, just on the Fan TV. Back at you another video. And we're gonna talk about Ravens mini camp day one. Who was standing out today? Who was making plays? Uh, before we get into that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let's keep running the channel up. Uh, subscribing, commenting, and uh, you know, hitting that like button, man. Getting these videos out to a wide audience. I appreciate y'all for everything I've done so far. Let's keep it going. All right. So Ravens mini camp. We the uh, most of the team is back in town. So what happened day one? Okay, first of all, Derek Wolf saga is over. Uh, I made a, uh, made a video about it. He got his injury settlement. He's no longer a Raven, so we don't have to. It's no more wondering: is he is he coming back? Is he not? What's this game between him and the Ravens? All that is over. Okay. Also, Mark, uh, Michael Pierce not here. Um, he apparently John Harbaugh said it's for personal reasons, so it's no need to no it's no need to speculate on that because if it's personal, they're not going to tell us unless Michael Pierce wants to tell us himself. We're not going to know. Uh, and then last off the field kind of thing, um, Marcus Williams was, they, they say he was a little banged up, but I don't know if he had anything to do with practice or they said he was just kind of trying to get back into physical condition of playing football. So I don't think there's anything to be worried about there. They said it was nothing serious. So we're just going to leave it at nothing serious for right now. Okay. So now what happened on the field? Lamar Jackson back in the building, never a doubt. We don't got to get into all that. So let's just talk about football with Lamar Jackson. All right. They said he was comfortable throwing the ball today. Looked good. Tight spirals. Uh, just very comfortable in the offense, in which he should be. This offense he's been running since, you know, his first year starting. Um, now, overall, how did he throw the ball as far as completions? 27 for 36 overall. We're talking about 10 for 10 and 7 on sevens. We're talking about 17 for 26 and 11 on 11 drills. Uh, including two interceptions. Okay, so we gotta mention interceptions, but it's okay. This is it's uh it's June. Don't don't interceptions in June is not the biggest deal in the world, uh, especially when I think some interceptions weren't uh, completely his fault. I think one of them they said that it was to Josh Oliver, the tight end, but it looked like Josh Oliver kind of pulled up on the route and allowed the um, the interception to be caught by the defender. Okay, so we can't completely put that one on Lamar Jackson, and the other one uh, might have been more on him. Okay. Uh, so, who was he throwing the ball to? The Lamar Jackson to Mark Andrews connection still strong. These guys have a telepathic connection, man. They don't need to be uh, at voluntary OTAs working out together, even though they do work out together in the summer at points. Um, they just know where each other is at. They said Mark Andrews had a lot of catches today, doing what he does. You know, he's he's an All Pro player. Lamar Jackson is an All Pro player. These guys are are going to find each other on the field. Simple as that. So um, there's no worry about their connection. Mark Andrews is going to probably have another big season. Uh, but, you know, it's just, it's just day one, man, so many camp, and I don't get too hyped. But Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson, still tight as ever. Um, Jackson and Bateman, okay? Um, Lamar Jackson threw a touchdown to Rashad Bateman in the red zone today. And now while we're, we're still in shorts and helmets, so I'm not going to make a big deal out of anything I say here. But Rashad Bateman needs to be a red zone weapon. The Ravens need guys, especially outside players, that can make plays in the red zone. They need to be able to, when they get out to the red zone, score touchdowns in ways other than running the football. All right, because sometimes I can get tight. Um, when you're in the red zone, everything is condensed. You need guys who can win one-on-one, -on -one, make plays. And Rashad Bateman is definitely a guy who can win a one-on-one -on -one and make a play. Um, let's see. I heard that they said Tyler Wallace had player of the day. Now, now this uh, pass he calls from um, uh, Tyler Huntley, so I just want to get that out there. But apparently he did he did a double move on Brandon Stevens, got wide open. Tyler Huntley hit Tyler Wallace, and uh, it was a beautiful route, beautiful play by by Wallace. Now Tyler Wallace, is interesting. Oklahoma State balled out. Was projected to really be a second round pick. Um, ended up sliding to the fourth round for whatever reason. Um, that's just what happened. Ended up starting to the fourth round. Uh, relegated to special teams, but now he's making his case for wide receiver two on the outside. And Tyler Wallace can ball. Uh, go up and get it, route running. He's not a speedster, but he could be a solid wide receiver two opposite of a sharp eight, man, if the Ravens don't make a move for anybody else. And we gonna. I want to see him make these plays against you know the ones and things like that. But it's good to hear that Tylen Wallace is putting plays out there on the field because he has a real opportunity 
to be a starting receiver on this team. Okay. Um, so now let, let's, let's get to the defensive side of the ball. Now, who was catching those picks on Lamar Jackson? Right. They both came from Tony Jefferson. <laughs> and um, the reason there's a little bit of a laugh with that is because Tony Jefferson is not known for his ball skills. I mean, you know, just going to be quite honest about it. So he caught two picks today. And Tony Jefferson is the guy who is, I don't think he's a lock to make the roster. So he needs to be making plays. Uh, the Ravens have a lot of safeties on this team. Now, uh, guys like Darius Washington, what they didn't practice today. I think I believe he was hurt. But Geno Stone's here. You know, Brandon Stevens can play a little safety. Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams, Chuck Clark is still on the team. There are a bunch of safeties on this team. So I don't think it's a lock that Tony Jefferson is going to make the roster. So hit, so hearing him catching two picks and making plays, good for Tony Jefferson. Hey, look, Tony Jefferson is a good tackler. Coverage has never been his strong suit. He'll probably tell you that himself. So if he can make more plays in coverage, that only boosts up his, um, his playing time and his value to the team. Okay, now, uh, Tyler Huntley also threw an interception today. And it was to Cal Hamilton. Cal Hamilton apparently uh, jumped a route that looked to be open and, you know, got, got in front of it. So, Cal Hamilton seems to have instincts that are off the charts. And if you watched him play at Notre Dame, if you watched the highlights of him at Notre Dame, this is consistent with everything that we've been seeing. This dude is a fantastic, fantastic player. His IQ for the game already off the charts, man. Like, he can read, diagnose. And once he does that, he makes the play. So the impressive part about that is he's a rookie whose processing time is already fast. And when he sees it, he go gets it. He doesn't see it, think about it, then go get it. He sees it and go gets it. And he's going he's gonna to make a lot of plays this year. He's going to be around the football. So uh, Kyle Hamilton continues to make plays. Like every practice report I swear I've done, I've heard the name Kyle Hamilton. And that's what you want to hear from your first round pick. So. The guy was a top five talent for a reason. People let a slow 40-yard dash really let this guy fall to 14. Crazy. Okay. Uh, another guy, impressive, hearing his name often, Dylan Hayes. Now, obviously, you can't sack the quarterback in OTAs. Oh, hell, you can't sack the quarterback at all, training camp, whatever. Um, you know, all that is reserved for regular season games or on the other team's quarterbacks. But Dylan Hayes is impressive once again. Now, uh, the reporter said, I want to see what he does in pads, and I can't agree more. Uh, but as far as his what he's been doing in shorts, Dalen Hayes is looking like he's ready for a breakout season. I've been saying this a lot, okay? There is opportunity on the other side of Adafi Owe, all right? Adafi Owe has one edge locked down. We need somebody to step up on the other edge. Ojabo, Bowser, out with a Achilles injury. Even though they both moved around looking good, could come back early in the season, didn't expect it. We need somebody, I would say, for at least three to six weeks in the season to start off. That's going to make plays. So, uh, I'm hearing Dylan Hayes. Haven't heard a lot about Dylan Ferguson. I haven't heard a lot about Vince Beagle. But I've heard Dylan Hayes' name numerous times. So, hopefully he can be that guy. Um, Another pass shorts guy, okay? Undrafted free agent, Jeremiah Moon. Now, the tweet is going to say uh, Jamario Moon who is a uh, former Cleveland Cavalier basketball player. So just, just a little typo by the, uh, by the uh, reporter. So no big deal there. But Jeremiah Moon is his name. And 6'5", 250, uh, pass rusher, uh, outside linebacker. Now, he's been one of the guys apparently making waves as a UDFA. I haven't really heard his name too much, but the reporters, if they're saying it, they've obviously been there. Obviously, I have it. So if they're saying it, I believe it. So the Ravens have a tendency to find undrafted uh, defensive players. Offensive players, uh, it's shaky. But defense, they'll find some talented undrafted free agents on defense. So if they're saying Jer Jeremiah Moon is standing out on defense, I believe it. Now this guy could be a special teamer like Chris Board. Um, this guy could end up playing some snaps at outside linebacker if, if he continues to impress. Because the opportunity is there. So... You know, apparently he beat uh, Linderbaum for what it would have been a sack on Lamar Jackson. Obviously, can't hit the quarterback like I said before. So, if if we can get a guy like Jeremiah Moon, continue to pro uh, progress, he could be that Ravens undrafted guy that makes the team. The Ravens pretty much always have an undrafted guy who makes the team. So, whether it's offense or defense, it's somebody usually makes the team undrafted. And um, 
that's pretty much the practice report from day one. So the Ravens uh, had some players that stood out. Uh, Lamar Jackson's back in the building, uh, you know, looking good, looking sharp. That's, that's what we want to hear. Lamar Jackson throwing the football well. The two picks, eh, not really worried about it. Uh, it's more about, I want to give more props to Tony Jefferson for catching the picks than taking away from Lamar Jackson. So that's the practice report from day one. It's your boy Gabriel. There's other fan TV. I'm out.